This video is brought to you by Blue Apron. The Super Nintendo was coming, and Squaresoft was preparing a new entry to their now flagship series early into the console's lifespan. Less than a year after its Japanese launch, Final Fantasy IV was released. America got it only three months after the SNES launch here, but we never got Final Fantasy II or III on the NES, so it was renamed Final Fantasy II for North America. Thus beginning decades of numeric confusion that some people still don't understand till this day. Final Fantasy IV is one of the favorite entries by fans, and playing it again, well, I can see why. However, I also remember how ridiculous it was. It's got a lot of really weird plot moments in it, an abnormal amount of spoons. Not this one, though. This is the one that I use to cook all the meals that I get from Blue Apron. Crushing the Segway! Blue Apron is a food delivery service that brings farm fresh full meals right to your front door, never having to leave home. The first 50 people to sign up using my link in the description will get $50 off for the first two weeks. And if you're into cooking and making your own meals, you'll want to. Easily one of my favorite things about Blue Apron is getting new fresh recipes to try out at home and level up your cooking skill. I actually really like cooking, but I was never great at it. And I've used Blue Apron before and I've talked about it before. It's helped me out a lot and I like them so much that I actually kept all the previous recipes that I've been using from them just so I could remake some of these because it, I feel like it helps me in my cooking so much. There's a wide selection of recipes that you can choose from each week, so if there's one you're not feeling, you can always try another. Or skip that week entirely, or cancel the whole thing at any time. There is no commitment. I make as many as I can, and as often as I can, as they're all healthy, delicious meals with varied ingredients. It also lets me try new food that I probably wouldn't otherwise. Again, check the link in the description for Blue Apron, and if you move fast enough using it, you'll get a discount. Use it for healthy food to help make sure you have the energy you need to play RPGs all day. Final Fantasy IV establishes an iconic opening, taking that classic Crystal Prelude theme, upgrading it with the SNES sound chip, and giving it a melody. Breathtaking. Coming from Final Fantasy 1 to this? It's beautiful. I bet this was even more powerful for Japanese players who got to play 1 through 3 before this. And if that music wasn't powerful enough, starting a new game brings one of the best songs in all of Final Fantasy 4 and immediately establish itself and what you're about to experience. This might be one of the best intros in the whole franchise. We get introduced to the main character, Cecil, the Dark Knight of the Kingdom of Baron, and the captain of the airship brigade, the Red Wings. He starts to lament that monsters have been on the rise and attacking lots lately, which I'm sure has nothing to do with everything he's doing, and then flashes back to the mission he just accomplished, attacking the peaceful mage village of Mysidia, killing several, and stealing their crystal of water. Gee, an epic RPG in which you have to collect four treasures of the elements. I've never heard that one before. Cecil feels bad about the whole murdering innocents thing, though, and when he tells his king about this, the king responds by removing him from the Red Wings and forcing his ass to walk to the Village of Mist to deliver a package. And joining him is his best friend, Kane, the Dragoon. And before he leaves, he takes a moment to tell his love interest, Rosa, about his internal struggles, and she assures that she cares about him no matter what. The next morning, Cecil and Kane head out, crossing the Bridge of Baron, and a familiar scene plays out. Wow, that was fantastic! This sets up so much of what you can expect from this game. A familiar setting and elements, incredible music, and more importantly, a fully realized story with characters that have their own thoughts, relationships, and struggles. 
Final Fantasy II barely dipped its toe into this, as 4 was truly the first one to set up what we expect Final Fantasy to bring. Story. I can't overstate enough how important this is. I feel like this is one of the first games to really tell a story with characters and drama and relationships. Each Final Fantasy game before this feels generic compared to this one. I'm gonna get back to the story in a bit though, because I should also talk about how this game radically improved the gameplay. One of the biggest complaints RPG games had by casual players was how slow the gameplay is. Ugh, they said. I have to wait to take my turn? Ugh. Yes, idiot. Do you hate board games or chess because of that too? Anyway, Final Fantasy IV found a way to change up that feeling of waiting and keeping the player involved. This game introduced the famous active time battle system, in which character turns come up depending on how quick their speed is. This meant that everything happens in real time. While you choose actions for Cecil, Kane is preparing his turn or spellcasters are charging. Sitting around and doing nothing means enemies will not hesitate to attack you. This means thinking ahead and making quick selections is rewarded with optimized plays and more reactions. Messages describing battle actions are gone, as it's now displayed quickly before you in colored numbers. That feeling of waiting and having your hands off the controller in battles was greatly diminished. This system worked so well that it was used for six Final Fantasy games in a row. It also added in a fun level of stress. Okay, yep, got it, go here, and whoops, nope, all right, wrong one, go back, okay, I got it, and shit, damn it, all right, did it again, okay, this time, shit, no, ah, no, don't hit me! The ATB system wasn't the only improvement, as they really emphasized interesting boss battles this time around. Previously, they were either just, quote, hard, because of how many hit points they had, or maybe had some strong spells, or in the case of Final Fantasy III, you had to do one specific thing in order to win. Now, with four, they introduced much more tactics and timing with the bosses. Sometimes they'll change forms and change their weaknesses, or attacking at certain times could cause painful counterattacks. Several encounters of enemies that heal each other, or hit hard, or protect each other, making you decide what's the most important target to take out. All of this happening in real time makes for much more satisfying battles. And taking a cue from Final Fantasy III, each character in your party has a job, more or less, that gives them special abilities. Kane, the Dragoon, has the jump command. Rydia is both a black mage and a summoner. Yong has a powerful kick attack. Sid can scan enemies with, ooh, oh, that doesn't sound right. And Edward, the bard, can get the f out of my party. While the majority of party members you get are spellcasters, these extra commands for each add much more options and variety for you to play with, and it's excellent. This game is fun to play. Compared to the three previous games, this is easily the most fun one. But it's also stupidly easy. Final Fantasy IV is a baby game for babies. The North American release was severely dumbed down. Like, super dumb. Like, Mystic Quest levels of dumb. For example, remember all those special character abilities? Like, half of them got removed because that's too complex. Cecil has zero Dark Knight abilities, Rosa is missing her Prey ability, Yang is missing both Brace and Focus abilities, and so on. Enemy attacks are so ineffective, almost every boss is a joke, and massive devastating looking spells end up doing like no damage to you. On the bright note, this means absolutely no grinding is necessary since the game is so easy, so there's that. Now to be clear, this is only the North American release that's like this. The Japanese original has the full experience and challenging gameplay, but with how easy the one we got is, I think it's one of the reasons that I didn't particularly enjoy playing it growing up. It's so mind-numbingly easy that it was like I barely had to play at all. You know that criticism some people have of Final Fantasy games where every battle is just mashing the A or the cross button until you win? This one was the true originator of that. But on the bright side, this does allow you to play another game at the same time. How cool am I right now? I may not be that much of a fan of 4, but I have to say some of the best Final Fantasy songs come from this game. The soundtrack overall is very good. 
but it has some amazing standouts. I already mentioned how excellent the Red Wings theme is. I also like the theme of love and Rydia's theme, but I have to give special mention to some of the best battle songs in the franchise history. The final battle is awesome, and the Battle of the Four Fiends track is so good, but my absolute favorite song in the whole game, the boss theme. Most of the soundtrack truly stands the test of time and is still awesome to listen to to this day. Another major standout for this entry is, as I mentioned before, the story. For the first time, there's a real story here with constant dialogue between characters and defined relationships between them. Uh, mostly. So when we all first played this in 1991, this was a major evolution forward for storytelling in video games. We hadn't seen anything like it before. It was like playing a movie in its own esoteric way, but a movie nonetheless. We were able to connect with and fondly remember the characters of this game because this is the most defined they have ever been. There's so much drama, plot twists, surprises, deaths, betrayals, all adding layer upon layer into an experience that was groundbreaking for its time. This is one of the most important factors of Final Fantasy IV. For a lot of people, this was their first foray into engaging emotional stories. And the story is... It's really stupid. I know, I know, it was revolutionary and memorable and all that, but the story is dumb. And I don't mean dumb as in ridiculous. I mean dumb as in a lot of the events are forced and don't have impact and the characters don't get a whole lot of development. Not that there aren't good moments. For example, Rydia, easily my favorite character in the game, has her mother killed and village burned to the ground by an unwilling Cecil, who then feels extreme guilt. Horrified by the blaze, Rydia, a powerful black mage, refuses to use any fire spell and their way up a mountain is blocked by a wall of ice, and they ask Rydia to melt it with fire, even though she hates that magic. But, thanks to long self-reflection of what it truly means to be a force for good, discovering forgiveness and compassion within herself and her new friends, her journey allows her to slowly overcome a traumatic experience that has haunted her for- Man, I'm just kidding! She gets over it thanks to peer pressure. There's a great part where they meet Edward the Bard, Yep, you Spoonie Bard, haha <laughs> memes, who is actually a prince, and his home was besieged by the Red Wings. His girlfriend, Anna, who is also Sage Tella's daughter, protected him from an onslaught of arrows and dies. This sends Tella into a rage, and Edward starts mourning, barely able to stand from seeing his home and his lover fall. And then, an eight-year-old Rydia waltzes right up to him and says, Get over it, bitch! So he does. Cecil begins as a dark knight, but as a means to shed himself of his guilt and dark tendencies, he climbs his way up Mount Ordeals and undergoes a powerful sequence in which he gives up the dark sword and becomes a paladin. This is one of the best moments in the whole game and gives great character development to Cecil. This also happens one-fifth into the game and all of his development stops right here. After this, there is nothing more for him. Lots of things happen to the people around him, or those important to him, but not to Cecil himself. And his girlfriend Rosa acts as a plot device the entire game and is never a character. My least favorite character is easily Edge, the ninja. He doesn't join your party until way past the halfway point of the game and has almost no agency for anything that's happening. He's cocky, hits on Rydia all the time and it's weird, is shitty towards everyone and everything, he dabs when he gets hit, and I think he just sucks. He could throw a spoon real good, though. The overall story is that the evil man Golbez is trying to collect the four crystals of the elements. But it turns out there's another set of them, called the Dark Crystals of the Elements in the Underworld. Gee, an epic RPG in which we'll hold on now! So they use these eight crystals to power a super death weapon known as the Giant of Babel, and then go to the moon because that's where the true evil is. And the moon has its 
own set of four light crystals and four dark crystals. Plus, there's another crystal on their moon ship that lets you fly to the moon in the first place. Seventeen. Seventeen total crystals. No running gag could have prepared me for this. Thanks to the power of Rydia's summons, we have stopped Golbez from getting the crystal. Oh, oh, wait. His hand is crawling. Stop him. Stop him. Stop him! Oh my god, alright. The original translation job is also really sloppy. There's the usual censorship, but then there's also stuff like Yang here, who gets ready to attack and screams, Achoo! Or when you defeat the CPU core and Kane says, We did it! Kane is nowhere in the party. I think my biggest problem with this game's plot is that everything is a fake out. They overuse that plot device so much it loses all impact and meaning very early on in the game. Kane is the first party member you ever get to join you, but he betrays you! Twice. But just kidding, he was actually mind controlled. And then Yang falls off the boat and then he fights you, but he's mind controlled. And then to stop super cannons from firing, he explodes himself or something? What even happens here? Dude, we have magic. Just, what are you doing? Ugh, anyway, Yang dies in a stupid explosion for no reason. But just kidding, he's actually fine. Palam and Porum turn themselves to stone to stop walls from closing in and sacrifice themselves. Oh, just kidding, they're fine. Sid jumps off the airship and explodes to steal the underground, which is easily the dumbest death in this game, but oh, fake out, he's fine. Golbez is the biggest, evilest guy you gotta stop, but fake out, he's being mind controlled. And he's Cecil's brother because what a twist. And this light is their dad. And Golbez isn't the big evil guy because there's a bigger, eviler guy who just shows up completely wasting the entire buildup that Golbez had. And when you fight him, you're literally given a crystal- Oh shit, that's 18. Right beforehand that you have to use to kill him in the ultimate form of Deus Ex Machina. Look, there's even more of these kinds of examples and I could go on. The whole story is so tropey, it's aggravating. This is the main thing holding me back from really enjoying Final Fantasy IV like so many others. I don't hate it by any means, but I don't think it's great. Playing it again does make me like it far more than I ever have before. Mostly because now I can recognize and appreciate everything it's done for the series and the impact that it's had on fans. It's not bad. For what it is, it's good. But I don't love it. That's why my final rating for this game is a giant steaming pile of crap out of, oh, just kidding, fake out out of 10. It's like every good thing about it has a big flaw that reveals itself quickly. Final Fantasy IV is what I consider the most stereotypical Final Fantasy game, but I mean that in a good way. ATB battles, melodrama, characters to love, lots of memorable moments, iconic scenes and music, it has everything that people associate Final Fantasy with. It's not the strongest example of each aspect, but it's all here and represented well enough. There's a reason it's a favorite for so many fans today, and it's because when it came out, it had the biggest impact on players and gaming at the time. A lot of people who have never played a Final Fantasy game before like to ask, where should I begin? And despite all of the issues that I have with it, this is one of the best ones to begin with. It's easy, introduces the active time battle system that many other Final Fantasy games use, and even though it's stupid, has a plot that's really easy to follow and enjoy to an extent. The SNES version isn't the best one to play. If you want the most up-to-date, accurate experience, play the PSP version of Final Fantasy IV. Great sprites, great music, and added stuff to do. I would avoid the PS1 version. It's fine, but the load times for battles and menus can get pretty irritating. The GBA version is also good as it restores everything that was missing from the Western release, uh, but it's not as good as, say, the PSP version. And then there's the 3D remake, originally made for the Nintendo DS. This version is much more divisive. A lot of people don't like the art style. I personally do. It kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy IX, though not quite as nice. But honestly, this is my favorite version of the game to play. All the missing gameplay elements are restored and several were added. Opening the menu lets you see the thoughts of your party members for a bit more story and character development. 
I found the improved cutscenes, dialogue, and voice acting added a lot to this story. I've worn this darkened armor for so long now. There's no mode of light left in me. The plot is still filled with a lot of stupid, but it's more enjoyable to watch at least. And it's super hard. Like, really difficult. One of the hardest Final Fantasy games I've played. If you're a veteran of the original, try the 3D version for size. I had so much fun with it that I played through this version in its entirety alongside the Super Nintendo one just for this video. The 3D version was also ported to Android and iOS, and that version is now on Steam. The Steam version, which is what you see here, is still good, though I highly recommend getting a mod to make the battles much smoother. To summarize, the PSP version of 4 is probably the best version, though I personally really recommend the 3D version too. I may not think Final Fantasy 4 is the best one ever, but it's still worth playing to this day, especially if you've played any of the other ones and not this one. It's rough around the edges, but it's a huge step forward from the last game. And if anything, this gives a strong indicator of where the franchise can go and how it can improve itself. Plus, if you play this one, you'll finally understand all of the spoon jokes, which actually gives me a really good idea. Ooh, I'm not getting that back. <laughs>